Section 3B Four Imperial Fours Section 3B 1 The Four Ways Empires Begin The idea of empire begins in the bipolar mind of any would-be hegemon. Any individual, bipolar would-be hegemon or not, can, thus, first encounter this idea of empire's pre-existence to themselves in one of two ways. They can formulate this conclusion for themselves on their own, or they may be introduced to it first in the exterior world. Thus, bipolar would be hegemon or not, and the duality of interior or exterior origins for one's encountering the imperialist idea combined to form the four conditions for the origination of any empire by attracting other people into a group society. One can originate the idea of empire on their own either within an existing empire or within a free society. Or one can live in a free society and only study empire until their society is conquered by empire or changed into it from within. Or lastly, one can learn of the meaning of empire by living in one that already exists. Once an empire has been established by an individual who is both bipolar and hegemonic, it will continue to expand exponentially until stopped by an outside force, because it feeds on its own hunger and expands itself by creating opposition. If any empire established by a bipolar hegemon is not stopped through opposition from beyond it by a monolithic greater force, any form of government established for such an empire will usually be able to continue to survive, thrive, and prosper even after the death of its founder. In this sense, through the concept of creativity applying the methodology of natural dualisms, such an empire with any form of government would be like itself a cancer or virus that doubles by mimetically infecting surrounding minds to inculcate their behaviors into group activities. In this sense, any form of governmental system can be likened to this type of empire if it shares empire's property of exponential expansion. Thus, any form of evenly balanced, exponentially expanding government has the seed of empire within it. Section 3b2 The Four Types of Empire The four types of empire are 1. The type that is best in terms of greatest amount of gains, both socially in terms of the form of government benefiting the hegemon, and culturally in terms of goods and wealth for the populist community. 2. The type that is worst socially, but best culturally. 3. The type that is best socially, but worst culturally. And 4. The type that is worst both socially and culturally. 1. The type of empire that is best both socially and culturally, benefits the hegemon above the people equally as much as it benefits the people below the hegemon. There is a strong sense of national defense within the empire, a strong patrol along its border, no rumors of threats from within or without, and a strong economy based on prosperity being attained by combinations of saving, trading, and earning. This sort of empire, because it is prosperous, is often not considered an empire by its citizens, although it does support as a figurehead a non-elected authoritarian hegemon. In such an empire, it is possible for the idea of democracy to generate and flourish in opposition or complementarity to the existence of the hegemony. If the hegemon is wise, it will encourage democracy to preserve the peace. If the hegemon is unwise, they will squander the empire's wealth on excesses of welfare or war. 
Any empire that can become a democracy is exonerated as being good compared to any democracy that becomes an empire, seen historically as inherently evil. 2. The type of empire that is worst socially, but also best culturally, is considered a democratic form of an empire. In a democratic type empire, there remains a single hegemon attached to the democratic wing of the state's government, in title alone. The right of the hegemon to dictate governmental form and set its policies atrophies until lastly it is erased. In this form of an empire, only a minority know they are living in an empire, and these minority are in the democratic wing of the imperial state's government. The majority of the population benefit more than this minority in terms of per capita income, and thus the minority who comprise the democratic imperial wing of their empire's government become a shrinking personality cult centered around a bipolar hegemon. Such an empire is prosperous for its populace, but they consider it an empire in name only. A sudden war from outside, or rumors of such a war coming, spread by dissidents within, will function as a pivot point for whether such an empire can continue to prosper, or if it will become destabilized. 3. The type of empire that is best socially, but also worst culturally, is considered a republic form of an empire. In a republican empire, there can remain a single hegemon over the entire governmental system of the state. However, it is also necessarily requisite for there to be a democratic wing of the government attached to the machine of the state that will supposedly whether accomplishing it or not, influence the hegemon's dictates on behalf of the populations of their empire. In this form of an empire, the majority of the population know they live in an empire, but a minority remain unaware of their surroundings even being considered such. This minority should benefit most among the population from the redistribution by the hegemon of the empire's wealth. Because it is best for the hegemon in such a republican form of empire when this rich minority controls the democratic wing of the government. For the type of empire that is worst both socially and culturally benefits neither the hegemon nor their empire. In such a failing empire we find plagues, famines, wars and rumors of wars, riots and natural disasters have crippled the empire's ability to expand. Any empire that stymies long is doomed. Any empire that cannot sustain expansion stymies. Any empire that benefits either the hegemon of the state or the populations of the empire more than the other for too long without rebalancing by the pendulum swinging back the other way risks a revolution. Any empire that reaches such a plateau is doomed if the hegemon remains bipolar and it will degenerate into forgotten dust. Any empire that reaches such a plateau is salvaged only by adapting to populist calls for pro-democratic government reform.